Hey, what's happening guys? Mike Moore here. Welcome to my channel. This is a, I, I typically do a lot of unscripted reviews on products. And in this case, this is the Lenovo Smart Display with the Google Assistant. Uh, I did a quick little unboxing of this I, sometime last week. This is the 10 inch version, but a lot of the uh, features are gonna be really similar. The only main difference is uh, the size of the screen and also the design of the back, which the, on the 10 inch currently is only bamboo and on the eight inch, it is just plain white plastic. All right, so I wish I had some really great recommendations about the Lenovo 10 inch. And if you've seen some other reviews, they basically say a lot of fantastic things about it. However, I find I have personally found this to not suit my needs. Um, it's one of those things where, uh, you know, you see a product comes out, there's a lot of great things being said about it, but it falls short on a lot of things I, could, I suppose that Lenovo had never really promised to be able to do. So let me go ahead and explain. All right, let's talk about some really fantastic points. Uh, the speaker is 10 watts, but it sounds really loud and sufficient for what you might plan on doing this. The ideal scenario for using this is somewhere in a kitchen or maybe in a family room because it has uh, a nice 10 watt speaker. It has a nice 10 inch full HD display on this 10 inch model. The screen is fantastic. It's got the Google Voice Assistant. So if you're like me, a lot of what you do is all linked to Google. So uh, you can go ahead and ask it for certain important information that you might want to know. For instance, okay, Google, what's next on my calendar? I the next event is called Panasonic Drink and Click Event. It's tomorrow at 7 p.m. in 2878 Columbia Street, Torrance, California, 90503. All right, so it, it's linked to my calendar. Uh, if you have a Google Smart Home Assistant, it's going to go ahead and give you a visual cue and update on here. And it also tells you about some other things that you can say to Google so that you can get uh, further information or actually help it to assist you a little bit better. Something that you probably wouldn't necessarily know if you've never had a, a Google Voice Assistant before. So I think this makes a great entryway into getting a smart home assistant uh, for your home if you've never had Google Assistants before. Okay, however, I have found that for my own personal use, I actually tend to use Amazon's uh, Alexa a lot more. And mostly because it is able to control all my home, smart home devices, they came to the market first, and I have their, uh, their, uh, their screen version of it um, mm -hmm. called the Echo Show, which I also use a lot. This technically beats the uh, Echo Show by a good mile, yeah, but it is it is bigger. It's not much more expensive retail price. This one I got at Costco for $199.99, but it actually retails for $250. Uh, and it does a lot of uh, great things that um, you wouldn't be able to do if you didn't have the screen. All right. So here I have right now, this, this is one of, the, I think, the, another one of the best features is, is you can choose between different arts, that artworks and stuff you can choose uh, that will display. Here I actually have from my Google Photo Album, so it will show and display my photo albums uh, one by one or I can customize it so you know it's, everything's all completely linked. And I think it makes a great photo display. However, uh, what I was really hoping to use this for was uh, to view um, more video and content uh, just casually, right? So I was really disappointed to find out that Netflix is not supported at all. I can't even Chromecast to this device because it's not supported. And, you know, when some people have asked Lenovo directly whether or not they're going to support it, uh, there, there's absolutely no response. And basically, uh, there's a good chance that it's not going to be supported. So what they do officially support is actually on the box. And unfortunately, if it is not listed on the box, chances are it's not going to happen. Right. So it supports YouTube, Spotify, Google Photos, Chromecast, uh, Google Duo, works with Nest, Philips Hue lighting system. Uh, that all works just fine right out of the box. Everything else you will have to wait and see whether or not Lenovo is going to support it. Or um, if, it, if it's going to be, you know, Nest compatible, obviously something like that, like if you get a security camera system and you just go ahead and ask Google to go ahead and show you 
uh, a security camera footage on the on the screen, you know, something like that's going to be supported. So that was a real disappointment because uh, when my wife is, is cooking in the kitchen and stuff, she likes to watch her videos from Netflix and, and is not supported at all, right? YouTube is, but navigating it's kind of difficult to do because you only have a voice. You can't actually type in a search for something on here. Okay, so, um, you know, $250, you gotta know your limitations. You're basically getting a nice Google Assistant with some screen functionality there. Now, I could perhaps do a lot better if I just got a whole separate uh, 10 inch tablet. Let's say I go super cheap. Let's say I get the Amazon one uh, with a 10 inch tablet with the Alexa built in, I'd get pretty much similar results. Uh, as I would be able to get on this for a cheaper price, especially since they have sales quite a lot. Um, one thing that I do think you need to know that's, that is better about uh, getting a smart speaker instead of this for your Google needs, if you're gonna ask Google something like, hey Google, can you convert 310 milliliters to ounce, fluid ounces? Sorry, I don't know how to help with that. Well, usually it'll be able to get it. Okay, Google, what is 410 milliliters in fluid ounces? 410 milliliters equal 13.864 US fluid ounces. So you get that nice visual uh, confirmation on a screen about exactly what you, what you asked and, other, and some other common questions. So that, that's pretty useful uh, right there. But what you don't get is the far field microphones okay so you might be wondering what that is well that is what allows uh, some of these other smart devices that connect with google or amazon uh, smart servers to figure out exactly who's speaking and to pick up what you're asking it directly so this is not going to have as good of a pickup as you can with uh, you know separate separate google home mini device or separate uh, Amazon Echo device that can pick up from across the room and uh, it, it's just something that's going to be a little bit more local right which is fine because when you think about it in a screen based solution you're probably going to be standing next to it if you want to visually see what's going on uh, so I can ask it certain things about YouTube which is fantastic but I can't ask it uh, most specifically and <laughs> annoyingly if I wanted to confirm and watch my latest own YouTube on here it's a little bit difficult because my name is difficult for this thing to translate. I can't even train it to do that. So let's let's see. Okay, Google, play the latest YouTube video on Mike Moo's channel. So see, it says Mike Here's what I Moose found on YouTube. Channel. Sometimes it gets it. Sometimes it doesn't get it because my name is not Mike Moose. It's it's Mike Moosey. So it it doesn't. I I can't even see that, right? But it's going to pick up certain things such as, for instance, our favorite vlogger uh, on, on YouTube is Casey Neistat. So, okay, Google, play the latest video from Casey Neistat. It knows that one because Casey Here's Neistat on YouTube. is pretty unique. It's a pretty unique name. I can see what's going on here. I can actually scroll through and choose from here. But if I wanted to do a new search, I can't actually use the touch screen. So I'm very limited like that. I can't even easily find my own videos on here uh, be, because of, of that reason. So uh, the operating system is super limited. You're, I'm much better off if I want to do things that are a little bit more complex that require a little bit of touch typing input with just using a regular tablet, just using an Android tablet or something like that. So, you know, that, that was really disappointing. It kind of limited the functionality of this display for me. What would have been really awesome is if there was an Android OS that I could boot into as well as just put it, whether I want it in just smart display mode or Android tablet mode. All right, now another thing about Android tablet, of course, uh, is that, you know, you can use different orientations. This supports two orientations, but really only one of them is for the smart display. When you flip it up like this, this is really only useful for video calling. Like I can't look at Instagram stories this way or, or Instagram uh, things on here. Let's see if this even supports the Instagrams. Probably not. Okay, Google, can you show me any Instagram? According to Wikipedia, Instagram is a photo and video sharing social networking service owned by Facebook, Inc. It oh. was created by Kevin Systrom and Mike Krieger.
Okay, Google, can you show me my Instagram? Sorry, I don't know how to help with that. So it doesn't it doesn't have that that connection in here. In fact, if I want to set up any customizations, I got to use uh, their Google Home app, which for me, uh, actually, I don't have my phone with me right here, which for me has been really buggy. Like I'm trying to go in there to configure certain things. Sometimes it'll connect. Sometimes it doesn't connect. Uh, so I can't find it and I can't configure it. And if I want to make some changes to the account and information, uh, it's it hasn't been a smooth process. It feels very beta, even though it doesn't say that it's beta. Okay, so so I had some configuration issues. But you might say, well, Mike, you just kind of basically configure it once and you're good to go. But sometimes, you know, what I like to change a lot is sometimes the ambient mode. You know how it displays, uh, what it displays, uh, basically when you're when when it's just left there on its own, on on, on just basically just waiting to listen for you to say, okay, Google. Show me the news. Here's the latest news. From NPR News Now at noon today. Okay. So I also use it to listen to a lot of news that works out just fine. Uh, but it doesn't Live show any from video. NPR News in Washington. It doesn't show any video clips, which would have been really nice if, if any of these uh, uh, podcasts actually had a video podcast. It'd be nice to make better use of the display other than just showing you know, a, a generic icon or screen on here. Um, what is really, uh, what is really nice to make use of the screen is when you got the Google music going on and you ask it to play some music, it will actually show the lyrics on here. So you can kind of sing along. There are other things such as if you look for recipes, it will actually, uh, will actually show you and actually guide you through, uh, how to, how to do something. And that's pretty useful, especially if you don't have your hands free to make something. Okay. Okay, Google. Can you find a recipe for making rotisserie? Okay, here are some recipes. Okay, let's see. How, how to make banana bread. All right, so I'm going to click on how to make banana bread here. And then I could basically say uh, start cooking. I had something else in mind. Okay, Google, start cooking. Oh, actually, I'm just going to click on start cooking. Actually, I was just listening. Sorry, right now. I don't know how to help with that yet. All right, so I'm going to click on Start Cooking down here, and I, and you'll see that it will. There are ten ingredients. You can ask for the next ingredient or skip to the instructions. The first ingredient is eight tablespoons, one stick unsalted butter. Next ingredient. Okay, Google. Next ingredient. Sorry, I don't know how to help with that yet. Next to, okay, well, obviously there's some issues with that, but if I just tap on here, it'll also advance as well. Uh, okay, Google, show me the instructions. I have lots of powers and they are growing every day. Again, you see, it's not perfect. It feels very beta. It's, it's not, it's not quite there yet. Um, but, but it gives you some things that you can do visually you can kind of see so rather than just tell you hey it can play some music and set alarms you can check whether it can play videos manage photos find food recipes uh have fun set timers check the dictionary manage calendars make phone calls uh control lighting play an audiobook manage uh manage personal information find music translate convert units find food and drink uh, just about everything that you can do with Google Assistant, you can already do here, except that visually you might find things to be a little bit lacking um, and not making the best use of the screen. Keep in mind, this is this is the first generation type of product. In fact, Lenovo's the first to come out with this. So, so if you're if you're looking at this video, maybe months or maybe a year later, uh, things could have very well changed. All right, so. There are not enough things for me to go ahead and give this a full on must buy and recommend. Now, if you uh, like to make use of, of timers and if you time yourself in a lot of different things, I like that visually you can kind of see on here. So, okay, Google, set a timer for 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes and we're starting now. Okay, Google, set a timer for 15 minutes. Second timer for 15 minutes, starting now. So timers are pretty useful if you need to 
do things, cast things. For instance, if I want to limit the length of this long video, uh, having a timer like this visually that I can see is pretty useful. So you can do certain things of this. Unfortunately, sometimes it doesn't doesn't quite uh, stay on the screen, uh, which is something that I don't know or haven't figured out um, why sometimes it will stay on the screen and sometimes it doesn't. But I can I can definitely flip through these these different things, and I can't configure these widgets too. So that's that's all not available on the Google Home app. One thing about that, I've only used the Google Home app on my iPhone 10 running on a beta iOS software, iOS 12. So maybe some of you won't have any problems configuring or connecting to the smart display. I certainly did, and that just kind of messed up part of the whole experience for me. All right, one more thing about this. There's actually a camera in here, and if you mention it in my unboxing, this camera is useful right now only for Google Duo video calling. So you is it is good on both platforms ios and android uh, i don't even think windows phone is available now but maybe it will support at some point but what's what's special is that they had the foresight to go ahead and put in the privacy screen thing here so there's actually a privacy shutter actually that that blocks the lens to ensure that your privacy on the built-in camera is not going to be compromised visually right it still has microphones all around so it's going to try to pick up everything uh, that is going on in the room but if you have privacy issues anyways are you really going to be trusting google to really do no evil or uh, or protect you from all the hacks that are happening all the time on on android devices right so i guess that there is that one other benefit is that this uh, the garbage truck driving by is that this since this doesn't run on a full-on android you're going to get the most use out of the snapdragon processor on here so this will at least last you a couple of years if anything but this is not something that's going to stay with you forever necessarily things should get pretty sluggish and slow in fact some things already feel a little bit sluggish and slow uh, when loading certain things on here okay so um yeah, so for $250, I'd have to say, you know, I'd probably wait until the price drops a little bit. Uh, if you um, were really hoping to make this an all-in-one control panel type of device that will help you control your smart home and all that, keep in mind it's mostly going to be uh, audio and with just with a little bit of visual enhancements on here, it's not going to be a full-on. Like, I can't, I can't customize the screen in any way for me to control my home lighting system or um, search YouTube or anything like that, like I might be able to do on a, on a tablet. There's only gonna be some functionality that I can mess with on here and uh, limited, very limited functionality at that. So is this worth it for you? Um, for me, since most of my usage is all on the Amazon ecosystem anyway, I don't use Google, very, Google smart systems very much here in my household. Uh, I'm going to say no, this is not going to be something that is going to really entice me to want to give up 200 some dollars to keep this device uh, here in the home right now. Come second or third generation, maybe we'll evaluate it when that time comes, but for me, uh, I'm going to have to give it a pass. If you are following me on the Google ecosystem and you kind of need a picture frame and you kind of want to have something in the kitchen and you kind of only watch YouTube and maybe don't stream a lot of videos to it. Uh, this might work out well for you. You know what? This would have been really cool for a college student. Okay, so if you are a college student and you have 250 bucks to spare or $200 for the 8-inch model, I can see how this could be very useful in visually seeing uh, uh, just make a great gift for a college student because you can see your schedule on here. Um, you, can, you can watch some of your YouTube on here. It's got picture frames and you can have Google Duo to be able to talk with your classmates your parents or whoever it is that you want, um, I can definitely see that. But for me, I would, I, I'm personally passing on this device. All right, that's it for my long unscripted review. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions for me, feel free to comment down below. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram, all under my name. And I will catch you in the next video. Please give this a like if you like. Uh, subscribe if you thought it was awesome. And I will catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Thank you.